So we're going to do a comparison uh, with this uh, small motor with closed loop uh, control, position control that is, with negative feedback and we're going to use proportional and difference or proportional plus derivative. I'm not going to bother with the integral action. Uh, it's a bit of a squeeze to get the bandwidth really, uh, as you'll see later. So you've seen something like this before. Here's my set point. Uh, here's my ESP32, my motor, my H-bridge, the scope I'm not using at the moment, and the uh, power supply. And I've um, tuned it a little bit. It's, it's a little bit of overshoot, but you can see it's working perfectly well. So this is with the Arduino uh, system. And it's reasonably okay. Sampling frequency is 1 kilohertz for reasons I'll go into later. Uh, and uh, now what we'll do is we'll go and have a look at uh, the Python method of doing it. The, the Arduino code is on the screen here. There's no need to, it's very hard to see it. Um, it's not very big. And what I've done is I've managed to write it in a way that's very much identical in structure to the way I'm going to do Python. So it's, I'm trying to make the comparison the same. So the PWM is uh, at 50 hertz. It's 10 bit uh, resolution because we can get more resolution for the PWM on the Arduino system, but I've limited it to 10. And uh, I've just done integer arithmetic. Uh, I don't have to, but I, it's actually faster. Uh, so I've to speed it up. I've used integer arithmetic for the proportional and the derivative term because the uh, the output to the um, PWM is integer anyway, so uh, you end up having to convert it back anyway if you didn't. So that's the Arduino one. And now let's have a look at the, um, the speed of how it runs in terms of its uh, benchmarking. And we're going to have a look at the Python one as well. So this is my benchmarking program, which is really the previous program I showed you with an Arduino. Uh, the only difference is uh, I have um, want to measure how long it takes for one loop of the program, of the which goes in the infinite loop really. And I do that by um, using the um, micros, uh, the micros command if you like, previous equals micros. That's a long integer, and then at the end, oops, down here, I'll say um, oh, after equals micros again, and then I take the difference. It's the usual way, but after minus previous, and I print it out to the serial port. Uh, there's nothing actually running in the main loop anymore. Um, I've got rid of that. It's just, uh, it's just a. I'm just going to find out how long one execution of the code is. So I'll run that and the servo won't work because I, I just want to do a measurement of the time it takes to run. So oh, that's it. That's it actually uploaded. So I go to the serial monitor. I don't see anything because I'm going to um, re use the reset button here which is this one and then you should see it resetting. So it says right at the bottom there, which I put in, time for one loop on Arduino is 28 microseconds. So remember that, 28 microseconds, I'll just do it again. It might vary slightly the second time. Let's put it 28, 27. I suppose we should probably take an average, but it's going to be, it's roughly of that order. As you see later, it uh, doesn't really make a a lot of difference. And now to the MicroPython version of the demonstration. I'm using a Thony editor, you could use any one, and uh, I'll try and get you a copy of this program. Uh, it's a beautiful language really, uh, Python. Uh, you see how everything indents. These are called blocks really. When you do that, um, there's no brackets. 
thing uses uh, colons and then underneath it indents so it's, it's actually very easy to read uh, so the actual main while loop is just here very little to it uh, this is the p term the derivative the proportional the derivative I only got proportional derivative and I send it out to the PWM which is a 10 bit 0 to 1023 um, now when I was doing this I noticed that the um, I was using interrupts just like on the Arduino for the timer for the timer interrupts to go around um, this infinite loop and a flag which goes high and low so if the interrupt counter is greater than zero um, it goes it, it executes the code otherwise it doesn't it's not the best way but it's the way that's suggested by other people um, unless you go down to register level let's see yeah, so if the error is positive uh, it goes in one direction or then if it's negative it goes in the other direction uh, now when I was doing this uh, I found out how to do timer interrupts you need a handler and uh, one thing I noticed is this bit here for the timer you'll see it says period equals one so that period is one millisecond and it turns out you can't get any less than one millisecond so if I wanted to sample let's say 10 kilohertz I can't there's a little discussion on this on the internet and ways to get around it but but in any case uh, this is why I went to the timing bit I decided that um, maybe what I should do is time how long it takes anyway to see what's the fastest sampling rate I could get anyway out of Python so we'll come back to that so if I just run it it should uh, runs almost identically to the Arduino one so just to show I'm doing a fair comparison literally no difference at all so at least for this in terms of its uh, implementation you can see well they're more or less the same so you know why would I bother with um, Arduino at all because this is um, seems to be much simpler to use well let's go and have a look at the timing of the time that this um, Python code takes to run and then we can make a decision based on that well here's our Python code which I hope you can see uh, now at the moment I'm running it on the uh, computer so you can if, if you look at this thorny editor you can run it on either I, I can upload it very easily I just right click and do upload to and it uploads it to the chip itself which is the ESP32 and uh, I, I can run it uh, there as well so there is a slight difference between you know which one you run it on but I just thought I'd show you the code first because it's the first time we've done a proper Python program so you um, import various things at the top of the program uh, I'm not sure I need that ESP32 but it doesn't make any difference really um, I need to import the pin and the timer machine and time and uh, this is for the interrupts handler for the encoder for the motor it's not one of the best ways of doing it but it's quite adequate and then we do the same again for the encoder, the other encoder, the external encoder. Set the pins with pull-up resistors, pin 32 and 35 here. And I've used the same pins for the Arduino uh, so that it's easy to swap. When I uh, run the Arduino one, I can't use the same uh, chip because I'd have to reload the Arduino IDE and then reload the other one so I'm just using separate chips but they're, they're compatible ones um, so I don't think there's an enormous difference between the two and this is the um, here we find that we've got the handler for the timer interrupt which I showed you before which is period of one milliseconds and it, you can't seem to get less than that so I'm going to measure the time taken just like I did on the Arduino so previous 
as the time in ticks and microseconds goes through the servo code just for one loop and uh, it finds the time at the end and then we subtract it so if I run it on the it's not run on the PC obviously it, it's it, it's I think it's decoded on the PC in the command sent to the to the micro it says the time taken is 483 microseconds and I remember the uh, Arduino was um, 27 I think I'll just do it again it's a slight difference every time you run it but if I run it the same code on the actual I click down here now onto the second window that's the MicroPython device which is the ESP32 it runs a bit slower you might ask why is it actually runs slower on the device itself I'm not entirely sure I think it's maybe because the PCs quicker at doing the interpret interpreting the commands the uh, ESP32 won't be as fast as the PC so it's, uh, it's actually ironically takes slightly slower when you run it on the chip so it's about 553 56 uh, when I do that the uh, motor turns a little bit just a tiny amount not very much so it's of that order 500 and something and as I say I've tried to keep everything very similar go to the Arduino code so you can see it in more detail um, the main loop hasn't got anything in it at all but uh, I just in the um, set the setup I put uh, timers to check the time so here I've put previous equals microseconds that tells me the time at the beginning then I go through the code just once and then after equals microseconds then I take the difference delta and it come out at 27 if you remember so here's the conclusion based on that if I um, there's a quick slide the benchmark comparison MicroPython versus C++ or Arduino C++ it's more or less uh, on average the results that you get uh, so the MicroPython from the PC 484 microseconds MicroPython from the ESP32 about 560 and the compiled micro uh, the, the compiled uh, C++ Arduino one is 27 microseconds a huge difference in fact it's about 19 or 20 times slower than MicroPython than C++ so this kind of compares well if you look at other sources on the web you'll find that they use the Mandelbrot set and they do um, benchmarking using that. I can't obviously do that on a micro, so I've just picked my kind of application. What this means is, however, that uh, we're very restricted to the sampling rate. I can only sample about uh, one kilohertz. That's about the maximum I can get for that code. I mean, there's, there's a little bit more uh, so I, one kilohertz is a thousand microseconds so I have got a bit of spare you can see 560 so before I get to a, a thousand microseconds I've got another 400 odd microseconds of code I can put in uh, but it's not going to be very much uh, there so it, it's not the sort of uh, language that I can really do much in the way of say did long FIR digital filters I mean I could do them on a PC of course and run them you know as a simulation but uh, running them in real time is, is going to be a problem and that's uh, rather disappointing I think about MicroPython because it is a rather nice language it's very easy to use so that's the conclusions of this the uh, MicroPython runs about 20 times slower uh, than the Arduino thank you